What's up guys? I told you guys I was going to show you how we do these salty. I haven't done that yet on the channel, so I started a few moments ago putting a couple in here and uh well, it's time to start getting on with the rest of them. So, we'll come right here. First thing I'm going to do is get that out of that little thing. This piece here is called your shank. This is your bit. What I'm replacing is the saw bits. So, that goes in, and then I lift up. And that rolls the bit out. And the way it works is the bit has got this little tooth in it, little grab spot right here, that has a little knot on the shank. I don't know if you can see that there. But on that shank right there, that goes into that and rolls it in. So let me show you what I do. Shank's held in my tool right here. I take a wire brush, just lightly just knock the dust out. I have an old paintbrush that I put a slight coating of oil. I take the new bit. I make sure this uh, shank right here, I didn't mean to drop it out, but I make sure the shank lightly is cleaned off. I'll put the shank back into the thing here. All right, now we're gonna roll this tooth back in. So you set your shank straight in like that. Take your tooth, get it started with, it's got the little holder grabbing right there. You roll in, give it a tap, slide that out. Then I like to take my, just lightly tap. Make sure that shank is set to the next tooth. Slide it in, find that, roll the tooth out, take my brush, clean, take this shank, I ain't gonna let it fall out this time, just make sure the dust is out, light coat of oil, let's set another one in. right in. Slip that out. I give it a little light tap. Make sure that shank sets. Get one more here. Now, my particular saw is a 48 inch saw. And this 48 inch saw that I have has 26 teeth. Some people might refer to that as a scattered tooth saw because the tooth spacing is a little bit more, uh, little, there's fewer teeth. Fewer bits are in this saw than what some common saws would have. And the uh, reason for that is this saw is designed to be pulled less horsepower. So it uh, has less teeth to pull and drag. Does a good job too. But this is actually Thursday night. Now, Friday morning, which is tomorrow morning, is when we're going to have this saw hammered. But uh, I had to come out here after dinner tonight and get these teeth changed because we're going to leave out in the morning fairly early to go. It's about an hour and 10 minutes to my saw man shop. So I got a ride in the morning. So I needed to get out here tonight and get these teeth swapped out before I sit down for the evening. When you own your own meal, your own business or anything like that, you definitely have to work some uh, irregular hours sometimes. You don't, uh, don't just get standard nine to five hours on your own business. Alright guys, you get the gist of that. I'm going to set the camera up over there on a time lapse and let you see how I finish this up. Cause, Lord, I don't know if y'all want to see me do it another 22 more times probably.
tooth into place. Next thing we got to do, we got to get the saw off and we got to put it on the crate to get it uh, in the back of the pickup truck. So that's the first thing I'm about to do now is I'm going to get this nut loose down here. All right, guys, we just got to get this off. I've got a wrench that's made for it to fit it perfectly. Get it up here and on there. Give it a couple taps. Still got a little oil on the fridge from last time. Grease on there. Nice. Set this up up here. This is your collar. This has to be machined to do its job properly. It actually contacts all the way out here on the edges and it's tapered in here. So I've had these machined before. Let's get these little set pins out. That's what keeps your saw uh, from spinning. Like it's not held on and squeezed tight. It's got set pins that uh, it rocks against. So you rock it and load it to the pin, then tighten it down. Set those set pins over here. Uh, we gotta get the saw guide up off of it. So that's gotta be lifted up next. Got a single bolt right here on the end. I think I have the wrench for it right here. So we'll loosen that a little bit so that this right here can be lifted. All I gotta do now is slide this back a little bit. After lifting, get that up. See my guides back out of my way. Saw is ready to be taken off of that. I'm gonna set me a board up across here to pick that saw up roll it out and then we'll put the crate over here all right guys i got to get this up off the mandrel and out here on this board to get it out of here i don't have it set up like super firm but i'm still agile so i should be fine so i got new carbide teeth in here and that's why we're rolling it across a board not on any of this metal i don't want my new teeth touching any metal at all because you can flake that carbide off easy. So I'm gonna get it right over here. Get myself in position with my feet. Lift this saw up. See now we're all on sawdust and it'll be fine right there. Let me go grab the crate and I'll show you how I put it on the crate. Alright guys, let's get this thing crated up. Get it centered up now. Put my bolt in the middle. The bolt wants to flop through the back. Once I get this lifted up and set on the bolt. That against that saw. Oh no. I'll tighten that up with a wrench in a little bit. That'd be ready to go in the back of the pickup truck. All right, guys. Saw's off. Got it ready to go get it hammered in the morning. It's the end of the day. We will see you guys first thing in the morning when we're headed to the saw shop. And just like that, it's morning time, guys. Time to put this saw on the back of the truck.
starting the day out blowing some money, guys. We'll put 80 in here and then head on over to the shop. We enjoy doing the YouTube. It's kind of fun to show what we do. Well, Not a lot of people, you know, fool with these circle saws. There's a lot of band problem. mills. Yeah. That's well, become more common. Yes, yeah, see, when he sent that uh, old crate to me, that Tywa returned to customer. That ain't my crate. Mine had handles on it for two folks. <laughs> mention on the video here how you're wood, you have wood floors in the whole shop so he can roll the saws through here without tearing the teeth up. Yeah, there's two over here You couldn't do that on concrete, could you? You're burning the teeth. stiff to me like it had that's what I'm talking about it's wiggling right now yeah. because the heat is so hot heat feels tension right 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 oh it is hot from sitting in the sun when, when I had it cold off the mill it had no spring to it right. you know how fast you turn it I turn uh, 525 Anywhere and it kind of that motor can kind of vary just a little bit, but say 515, 525, right in that area. Yeah, Hey, man, and 
he's the first one to have it for daddy back in the early 70s. So your dad had people here with him hammered? Yeah. yeah. He always had it hired so I did. Okay. And uh, uh, but that roller, it was bought used and all this, I don't know where they got the ammo and all that. They built all this stuff and started doing that and everything. And boys, I learned that on the block building. And uh, they built this building and moved it over here. In the uh, early 80s, Jack we went to some of them and started going to South Shop. Mm -hmm. Then a guy named Jimmy Castleberry worked here. And he's the one that pretty much trained to make Jimmy worked here for a lot of years. It was like it lost its uh, its shape. It's like it wasn't as cupped as it was. Right. That's because does that mean the belly's out on it? I'll, I'll 
I'll look at that and make sure. Specifically for this reason. I have no clue, glass mid all the time. Why is it so dark in here? I wanted light. to cover that on the video because, yeah. like, a lot of people don't know that he needs to be able to see shadows and light behind that saw, so that's why he has it lit the way it's lit in this building. Right. I don't have to do something where I'm going to build dirty and I'm going to build that shed right here. Mm hmm. And uh, that's really that window. Right. So, your daddy put that light, he put that window for you to look down a saw out that light. This is the part here that blows my mind. This is the reason you get paid because you know where to hit that saw. Yeah. I don't know how you know where to hit that saw. Well, oh, I've just gauged it's turned over in the collar just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do. take this to have it hammered because I knew it wasn't running right mm -hmm. and that means stop <laughs> you know go get something checked swap your teeth you can't get well you know if I kept on pushing on it I'd have ended up having you over here hammering for an hour and a half trying to get it back right because I'd done you know
off the truck. This is the next day. It's actually been, so we had one night, one full day, and now it's the next day, so. About two and a half days. I'm about to unload this thing, put it back on the saw. We'll check those collars like uh, Chris told us to. Make sure everything's good to go. touch. I didn't tighten anything. I'm going to go ahead and set our saw guide down. So, what we want to do is back these off. We're going to lift up right here. Ease that on. We'll make sure right now nothing is touching on either side of this saw guide. Neither one of the wooden stops here touching. So what I want to do is I'm going to take, you can put your camera right back here. And what he told me to watch for was as I tighten this nut, which I know this, but he told me to look at it right now with the trouble we had. We don't want to see any movement by very little as this tightens. So, okay, I just went snug. And from what I could tell, I didn't see any movement, did you? No, I didn't see any movement. So I'm gonna, all right, so that's loose. Let's watch close here on either side to see if this saw moves when it bumps up tight and squeezes. I can't tell it went closer or anything, so I think we're good. And that you have to run a wrench, you know, I gotta, I got to tighten these by hand. And you can get them close. But the way this saw is cut sort of like this towards a log. And when you hit the revolutions that it's hammered for, which mine is 525, as it hits 525 RPMs or gets close there about, it will start to open and flatten out. The only way on this old style, you get them close right here. It's near where it needs to be. But I gotta get that, I gotta get it running at RPM to make my last final little little adjustment to run those guide pins, you want about a sixteenth or a little under, just a little little shiver, slim, what's the word? A little sliver of air between each side of those guide pins. And that's so if she tries to deflect one way or the other, it just holds it straight and true. But you want it nearly touching, but not touching on both sides. And like I said, I have to go up and run and I take my wrench, there's nothing in here, the carriage is on the under end, nothing to be moving other than that saw blade right there. And I'll have to come right here and I'll have to go a little tighter, come on the inside a little tighter until I get it fine adjusted where I want it. So we'll show you that and uh, we'll wrap it up. guys I want to show you something neat and I'm gonna show you why at speed you have to adjust that saw if you look here's the safety precautions I took for those that are safe to wear I don't have a sleeve to get sucked into anything I don't have a glove to get sucked into anything sometimes in my opinion 
loose clothing and extra gloves are how you lose fingers. I had my bare hand where I could see with a long wrench. And let's get to the point here. What I want to show you is why it has to be adjusted while it's running. When the saw was shut down, now it's not under operation anymore. You see how it's cupped towards the log and now it's touching, just very lightly touching this side pin. But now when this saw is under operating speed, it's running in the middle between these two pins. So when I shut it down, it falls back out here on the outside pin, but when it runs up to RPM, it stands up. When you hear somebody say, I need that saw to stand up, what they're talking about is under its operating speed, it opens up and runs between those two guides. And you can clearly see this saw is doing just that because under operating speed, I adjusted it to where it barely touched on either side. And when it goes off, it's back out here on this board, uh, log side pin. So, success. Don't have a collar issue. Seems to be fine. I will have to test it and saw on it, but that won't be today. That will be first of the week. And uh, before I do that, I'll also go through and make sure my tracks and everything are level like they're supposed to be. And I'll check the lead. So, that's no issue. I'll do that. And then we'll move forward with our week. But uh, I do appreciate you watching that because that was a cool one. We haven't done that before. And just like that, I got the camera again. Here I am. And we're finished up for the day. That was a little two and a half days putting together that. But I thought it'd be neat for the people that were interested in that circle saw to get some behind the scenes footage of how those things run. Look, you don't just uncoil a band and throw it on. There's things that go on inside of a circle mill that maybe you didn't know and maybe i enlightened you on that or maybe you already knew i got a lot of people out there that follow me and they are old circle sawers and they know exactly what i'm doing so i hope you get to experience it again through watching us do that chris was a wonderful friend and uh helped you know let us record him doing all that he even said we could stay behind and record some more so we'll definitely get some footage of chris hammering saws that is a lost art that a lot of people are not picking up on these days, but, you know, what do you do? It's hard to get these young folks to do stuff. <laughs> well, what you got? Uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon page. Uh, that will be in the description below, right down here below. So go down there and check us out on there. Yep, check us out. Patreon, she's always updating stuff. My guys and gals over on Patreon have already seen that we went and done this saw stuff. so They got, they got to see it early. They got to jump on you. <laughs> Check us out over there. It's just fun. We post a lot of stuff on there, and uh, we're going to do some more content on there in the future. I'm glad you guys got this one done, but until next time, guys. See ya. Bam.